Welcome everyone and welcome to the webinar introducing T-Levels, Construction on Site and Building Services Engineering. Thanks for joining us. Before we get going, I'd just like to explain a few things about the webinar platform to allow you to get the most out of the experience of the webinar today. All viewers initially will be in listen-only mode. However, we want you to engage with the webinar, so please use the on-screen panel. You can use the question tab to engage with us and we'll be picking those questions up along the webinar and our chair Susie Bremen will then be helping answer those at the end of the webinar. We expect it will be extremely popular but we'll do our best to answer all your questions and queries and then what we'll be doing after the webinar is collating all those questions and queries and creating a frequently asked question document and sending that out along with today's presentation. Okay, we're going to introduce ourselves in a minute, but let's look at the agenda. We're going to look at who's on the webinar panel today and who's going to be answering your questions. We're going to look at the outline of the partnership agreement, introduce you to the T-level programme and technical qualifications. We're going to look into the design model for those qualifications, the milestones for the project and project development, the support and guidance we're looking to provide, and then we're going to have a Q&A session afterwards which will hopefully get all your questions answered. Okay, who have we got on the panel today and who have we got on the webinar? Well, there's myself, Building Services Technical Advisor, Rob Malinder. Anita Crossland, Post 16 Senior Manager. Salim Bizram, Lead Industry Manager for Building Services Engineering. And then in the Q&A panel, we're going to have Susie Brennan, Post 16 Manager, who's chairing the Q&A. Joel Richards, Construction Industry Manager. And Scott Wilkins, engineering industry manager. I'm now going to hand you over to Anita Crossland who's going to introduce the partnership and how we're working with EAL. Yes yeah, so as Rob said uh, we have a collaboration with our partners EAL working on the development of the TQ qualifications for the T levels. Uh, EAL obviously have a long history within qualifications and we're delighted to be working with them on the T levels itself. EAL will be helping us provide that focus on quality, ensuring the currency of the content that we develop, meet the policy visions for the T levels, help us to drive up standards, but also to meet the learners, providers and employer needs for our TQ qualifications. For a number of years, City and Guilds have been working closely with key stakeholders across both construction and building services engineering. Organisations such as the Chartered Institute of Plumbing and Heating Engineers, the Association of Plumbing and Heating Contractors, the Federation of Master Builders, as well as the Electrical Contractors Association. We are delighted that these organisations and people are going to be involved in shaping the future of our sector. We now have a soundbite from Martin Price, MBE, Chairman of CTATF. Hello, I'm Martin Price. I'm Chairman of the Cross Industry Construction Apprenticeship Task Force. The Task Force was established in 2007 with the principal purpose of increasing apprenticeships within the construction sector. I'm delighted City and Guilds have been successful in winning the T-level bid and we're equally excited to be involved in the development of these qualifications. I was fortunate to be on one of the T-level panels and I believe the depth and rigour within the qualifications is really going to complement the sector and the standards we're looking to drive. As a task force, we'll be involved in any way we can through the validation panels and using our employer network in inputting industry expertise to development of content. And I would encourage everybody to get involved in helping shape the future of our industry through these T-levels. OK, so what we're going to do now is just look at actually why we're here and what T-levels are all about. Quite a few years ago, we started to see some changing uh, approaches to vocational education. And there's been quite a few policy uh, documents that actually outline the future of technical qualifications. The government vision is to have a much more streamlined approach to opportunities for young people post 16. The idea is that a young person can choose to stay within an academic route and continue studying A-levels post 16, or they could choose to take on an apprenticeship or the new T-level. T-levels will become the 
one of the three major options for a young person post 16. The key principles of this new education system is to really put employers at the heart of everything that we do, to ensure that we future proof the sectors for our young people in the future years. So now let's look at what a T-level programme actually looks like. The T-level programme is a framework that complies of a technical qualification and also elements of industry placement, maths, English and digital skills, either a GCSE or a functional skill, any licence to practice requirements that the T-level panel has set out, and also tutorials or enrichment activities. The contract that we have won actually is for us to develop the technical qualification, which is made up of a core and occupational specialisms. The design principles for this technical qualification has already been established by the Department for Education and the Institute for Apprenticeships and Technical Education. The core part of the technical qualification goes across all of the construction pathways. This core will be graded A star to E and will take up between 20 and 50% of the total qualification time. The core will be assessed through an external examination and a substantial employer set project, which will be set by employers themselves. The other part of the technical qualification is the occupational specialisms, which Rob will talk about in a little bit more detail later on. But these occupational specialisms will take up between 50 and 80% of the total qualification time. These occupational specialisms will be graded past merit and distinction. And most importantly, they will be based on the occupational maps that are used in the apprenticeships. No less than 50% of this qualification uh, will be covered by occupational specialisms. And this assessment will be taken through a synoptic practical assessment What's really important as well to understand that technical qualification will, be made, will make up a substantial part of the T-level programme. The T-level programme will be made up of 100 and, sorry. So now we're going to look at the T-level programme. The T-level is made up of several components. In the heart of it is a technical qualification or a TQ. And this is the contract that we've been awarded to deliver. The technical level programme comprises of the technical qualification, work placement or industry placement, maths, English and digital skills, either GCSE or functional skills at level two, if a young person hasn't achieved that already, any licence to practice that the T-level panel has identified for the young people to complete, an enrichment or tutorial activity, the T-level programme is expected to be delivered over two years and has UCAS points, which will be equivalent to three A-levels. The technical qualification itself is made up of two components. The core is made up of 20 to 50% of total qualification time and is graded A star to E. This core will go across all of the pathways within construction. This is assessed through an external exam and a substantial employer set project, which are set by the employers themselves. The occupational specialisms will make up between 50 and 80% of the total qualification time and will be graded past merit and distinction. Rob will look at this in a little bit more detail later on. These occupational specialisms are based on occupational maps that are the same as that sit within the apprenticeship standards. The learner completing the occupational specialisms will complete a synoptic practical assignment. So now let's have a look at the technical qualification overview for construction on site. All learners will need to do a core component, which is going to be the key principles for construction in all qualifications, so which overlap across all construction trades. This will be assessed by an external exam and an employer set project. They will then have to choose one occupational specialism from carpentry and joinery, plastering, bricklaying and painting and decorating. Once they've carried out the learning for those uh, occupational specialisms, 
these will be assessed by a synoptic assignment. It says on the slide there, practical assignment, but obviously this will have knowledge built into that assignment to assess the knowledge as well. So an assignment at the end of the programme to assess the key skills and knowledge has been carried out throughout the programme. So that was construction on site. Now let's look at the technical qualification overview for building services engineering. So the construction core component will be the same core component which is in the construction on site, assessed in the same way, delivered in the same way. But then the BSc learners will have to complete the BSc core component. Like the construction core, this is assessed by external exam and external employer set project. Again, this is going to be the core principles which carry out and follow through all building services, engineering, qualifications and programmes. Then the learner will have to choose two occupational specialisms from the slide. You can see the occupational specialisms are plumbing, electrotech, aircon engineering, electronic equipment, ventilation, protection systems engineering, gas engineering, refrigeration engineering and heating engineering. And what the thoughts are is that you know, centres and learners will choose two pathways which are very closely linked, such as plumbing and gas, plumbing and heating maybe, maybe ventilation and heating, refrigeration and air conditioning would go very well. So there's some overlap in delivery to bring in the core content is then reducing perhaps the delivery time because there's a lot of delivery time in this with the two core and the two occupational specialisms. Again, the specialisms are going to be assessed by a synoptic assignment, which is a practical assignment with the knowledge embedded. OK, so what's our approach to design and development of the technical qualification? Well, to start off with, we've been provided with the content and structure of these qualifications by the various T-levels panels. So the on-site T-level panel and the building services engineering panel have drafted the content and the structure of these programmes. We're then taking the content and structure and we're amplifying that and turning it into a technical qualification. So we're giving that content range for centres to be able to deliver it effectively so we can then create effective assessments. So along the way, we're ensuring this is employer focused. So that's why we're, we're engaging constantly with industry along the way. We're dynamic and open to challenge. We're having constant review days and constant options for centres and stakeholders to review our material and feedback. So we can consider the average learner and any special educational needs. So how does this qualification development cycle work? Well, first off, the T-level panel content, which we've been provided with, we've taken that and trained specialist consultants to amplify that, give that range and turn it into a T-level qualification. So a first draft. We then qualification assure that with our development experts, review the content, produce that into a draft. We then validate that draft with a wider audience. So providers, employers, professional bodies, and we're going to go through dates and how this process is going to fit into everything in a moment. Once we've got those drafts, we're going to then review that again, digest things further, take further feedback from an even wider audience, get that feedback, rationalise it, make any final amendments and submit then the final draft. But that's not going to be just one cycle and then we complete. We're going to be totally along the way taking feedback and when these have been produced and assessments have been produced, will we keep going through this cycle in an ongoing development process? So what are our development milestones for the project? So by Feb 2020, we're going to have some draft technical qualification specifications available. So that's what we're taking feedback on at the moment. We're rolling out there, uh, you know, amending those, getting them fit for purpose. And we're going to have the draft available and a draft assessment strategy to go with that. By April, we're going to finalise that technical qualification, have some sample assessment materials to take some feedback on, and a final assessment strategy will be developed. And then by June 2020, we'll have full approval submission. So everything will be complete, everything will go to IFATE and Ofqual, and then we'll be rolling that out then to potential centres 
up and towards September 2020 in preparation then for a September 2021 delivery. So what sort of things have we been doing throughout Milestone 1 and working towards Milestone 1? Well, we've mentioned, you know, creating the draft material, getting things validated. And so how we've been doing that is, well, with things like today, uh, obviously this is the first webinar for eligible providers, for employers. We've had employer validation panels throughout the country. There's one of them actually still to come on the 3rd of December. But if you've not actually been able to attend one of them, what we're going to do is send out the draft technical content so our amplification, if you like, of the T-level panel content, where we are to date, and our online consultation, we're going to send that out as part of the follow-up from today's webinar to give you that chance to feedback. So as previously mentioned, we have trained up a pool of specialist consultants to draft material, write assessments, etc. But we are always looking to increase that pool of consultants, especially from our employer network trade association network etc because it's key we ensure this fits industry fits into apprenticeships higher education etc so ensuring we get that feedback along the way from the key stakeholders is invaluable so if you're in a position you'd like to get involved in the project we've dropped an email address on the slide there please contact us so what sort of other support and guidance have we already created if you haven't visited our new web page for T-Levels, please do. On there, we've created a timeline with key dates and activities to keep you up to date on what's happening throughout the development phase right up until September 2021. We'll be running lots of uh, events. We will be uh, continuing to update our frequently asked questions. On our web page, we also have links to key documents from the Department for Education and the Institute. Today, we've run the webinar for our eligible providers and also our key stakeholders, and we will continue to roll out further webinars to keep you updated. We've already sent out uh, letters to our employers and our providers to tell them about our win and also to encourage them to get involved. We will continue to keep our employers updated through our skills boards and meetings. And we're actually going to host a stakeholder engagement event in late January, early February, and we'll be telling you more about that soon. We'll also be running some eligible provider approval criteria webinar in the springtime. So again, please make sure you visit our web pages frequently and we will keep you updated. So I'm just going to mention a little bit about the eligible provider approval process. Those providers that have already been approved by the department will need to go through an approval process to deliver the TQs with City and Guilds. We plan to take you through that process step by step in the following year to 18 months. We will ensure that we contact you in enough time to help prepare you for that approval process. The application will be an online self-assessment part of the process. And again, we will be here to provide you with guidance throughout that. Our approval consultants from across City and Guilds and EAL are occupationally competent and have the detailed knowledge of the TQ. You'll be allocated an approval consultant who will review your application and complete an approval visit and support you through the process. Working with us is obviously key, but we are really keen to make sure that you are supported right the way through this and you are ready to work and deliver the TQ from September 2021. Our further webinars and guidance will follow on this webinar and early into the spring, we will give you more information. Thank you so much for listening to our webinar. Now we'd like to pause for a few minutes to give you a chance, if you haven't already, to create your questions on the question tab and our panel will be able to answer your questions in a few moments.